total emissions by 50% of emissions that we are emitting today in terms of carbon dioxide. That is not an easy task at all. Malta is the most populated state in Europe. 400,000 people inhabit 456 square kilometers of land. Malta is situated on the southern tip of the European continent and boasts an average of 300 days of continuous sunshine, making solar energy viable. Researchers into the global warming phenomenon claim that temperatures will rise by another 4 degrees Celsius and this will affect the islands drastically. Well, global warming is, I think, the biggest problem we have in the world because sea levels are rising, it's causing poverty, people are having to move from one country to another and unless we do anything, it's going to get worse. The problem is that the change is happening so fast that the ambient around us is not able to cope or to follow that climate change. Recent studies show that the Maltese people have the highest percentage of lead content in their blood. We have almost seven cars for every 10 inhabitants. And that's a very, very high uh, percentage, which means that uh, pollution at city level and at street level is quite high. احنا عملنا دار تهدم بالسولار بانلز وبالوين تيرباين تتشارجي باتري هذا ورا ورا السولار بانل ما تكون مريح تتشارجي بالتوربينه ما تكون مش مش تتشارجي بال بالسولار ما تكون متنين تتشارجي بيوم اثنين الدار تشعل هذا بلا ليديس او لا ليديس من نوع في يوم ما تنتج يحلو فولت او ولا ما تنتج يحلو الالتركو Apart from the huge amount of cars on the roads, the two main power stations still operate with crude oil, polluting the air locals breathe. We've been introducing our students to sustainable and renewable energy sources. Students learn how can they be more energy efficient at home. Michel is a physics teacher in one of the most forward-thinking junior lyceums on the island, St. Ignatius College. At St. Ignatius College, uh, a photovoltaic system has been installed. It was one of the first colleges in Malta to have such a photovoltaic system uh, in place. The students are very excited about it, not only because they are saving electricity, but also because their photovoltaic system is uh, saving carbon dioxide. Going Renewable is a physics project where students build technologies that operate with sustainable renewable sources. Together with other teachers, Going Renewable was initiated back in 2004. We have to educate our students to use more sources which are renewable. Uh, we have the sun here in Malta which is in such an abundance and we can use small things even in our houses to reduce fossil fuels. For instance, we can use photovoltaic cells or solar water heaters. For example, in the classroom, we do the theory about renewable energy, etc. But then when the student does the model himself, he is learning, first of all, the, practical, the practicality behind it. Secondly, he is learning the difficulties encountered by scientists when doing a project. This project was fun to do and the effort that I did has a reward for it too. This year, Going Renewable made part of the European Union's Sustainable Energy Week. You are the only school in Malta which has made such an effort to participate in this particular week. It is, I think, remarkable that a school can put together such a great show and capture the energy and enthusiasm of its pupils on a project like Renewable Energy. I've been absolutely thrilled to see what you've done here. Everything from wind energy through to photovoltaic, through
through to uh, flat plate collectors. These are the technologies of the future. These are very big for Walter's future and for your future. Profit from the educational experience. These are the best days of your life, the best days for learning. And when I see the fantastic projects that you have done, you have made great achievements. Keep up the good work. The winning project revamps vintage technology and operates on solar energy. A student uh, partnered with his grandfather and they used a solar concentrator to power a Stirling engine. Um, my project was a Stirling engine with a solar concentrator, which concentrated the sun to a point which made the Stirling engine work. Now, Stirling engines are very old uh, technologies, however, recently they are picking up and, uh, and becoming more useful, especially in renewable energy uh, systems. Well, basically, you have a pocket of air inside this tube and this part in here. And when the sun comes, it concentrates to this point with this concentrator. And when it concentrates to this point, which is called the focus, and the air expands, these fins make it contract because they make it cool. And when it expands and contracts, the flywheel turns, you have to give it a push start and it starts turning. Most projects reflect the simple but effective ideas students came up with. So this is a hydroelectric dam. You need to do this process by having a lake or an open sea. This is the lake. This is a turbine. With the pressure of the water, it spins so that it produces electrical energy and lights the, the bulbs and the, and the houses. And we have the wind turbine too, to produce energy with it. This is kind of a generator. These two objects are connected together so they can give the most energy. What sparked Michelle and fellow teachers to introduce students to such a project? Students have other skills which actually we tend to ignore such as uh, manual skills and uh, thinking skills and uh, I actually use this project to get out these skills and they can use renewable resources and be more creative in generating new ideas. Building up awareness of global warming in our younger generation could be key in reaching the government's targets of carbon emission reduction by 2014 and 2020. So what did the students learn from this school's initiative? I learned how to build an engine that helps us in the environment and I learned that we have to take care of our energy because it will not last forever. I learned that when that in the earth there are many types of good resources that we can use. There is the sun, wind, sea and many more. Uh, we can use it very good if we want but we can use it bad too. Through these projects, students are coming up with bright new ideas that can lead the way to attract top industry people to take on board such initiatives. If we take just one market, like the photovoltaic solar electricity market, we can see that lots and lots of new companies have recently opened and new manufacturing facilities have been launched these past few years uh, to the extent that the price of photovoltaics is now falling, falling rapidly and we estimate that by 2015, the price per unit uh, or per watt will be round about one euro per watt, and that makes it very competitive. So this myth of having uh, high prices is really not there. It's disappearing very quickly, especially with the fact that fossil fuels are increasing in price. Going renewable will not stop here. There seems to be more in store for the bright future, since sustainable energy sources are the way forward. So what's next in the Going Renewable project? This is education and practice. It's not simply theory, but it's combining theory with practice for a common good. What I would like to see maybe next year is to get companies to have a look at what the students are doing and maybe they can then also support this program further. It would be really positive to invite other students from other schools so that not only students from our school benefit from the idea. Eventually we hope to uh, move on to further schools and uh, 
maybe, who knows, we can uh, develop this idea all over the island.